What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the roaring hot inflation going nuts, no rate cuts ever coming again. Live economic stock show, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. We're going live, going to cover all the news of the day, including the insanity that's been going on in our markets. And you guys know the deal. It's we're gonna have a good time. How's it going, everybody? If uh, <laughs> Jerome, <laughs> it's your ADHD it's gonna make you a basher. All right, well, I'll, I'll weigh you on a uh, you know, I'll, I'll grade you on a scale. <laughs> Linda, what's up, midnight? Phil, Daniel, Darren, the one, what to do, Pat, Jeff, Polly V, Man Tam, Marlin, so now what, Vin Man in the house, Kathy. Please hit that like button. Thank you very much. Mamba, inflation coming in hot. No rate cuts. No rate cuts for you. Come back. One year. <laughs> DB, congrats on my economic predictions so far. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I've had a good run lately. I've been on it. And, uh, you know, nobody's perfect all the time. But you try to be wrong more than right. And I just, I, you follow the data. And I feel like it tells you eventually what's going to happen so i it's starting to it's starting to come together for me it just took a little bit <laughs> but that we'll see if it keeps going but uh, i still feel very strong about a lot of this stuff and what's going on um alibaba deal for finger yeah finger was awesome today wait who was first troy man and yoker was that a tie i don't know but let's uh we'll call it a tie andy brewer what's going on Pat Cicio Vince is Arca talking about some no notification. Well, Jack, you only you're only a minute late, so that's pretty good. That's pretty 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 good. By the way, did anybody watch the end of Curb this week? Oh my gosh, fantastic! Just <laughs> just beautiful, beautiful final episode for Curb Your Enthusiasm on Sunday. That I don't know if they could have ended it better. So, all right, well, let's, uh, Soljo, what's up, buddy? Robert, John Croissant, Julian, Armand, how are we doing, guys? All right, let's, uh, let's talk about Finger to start, all right? And then we got a lot to go over, but, uh, obviously, GTI, great day, 7.5% up. Isn't that funny, guys, how this, uh, you know, these, these counter market plays work? Dow down 420 points. Uh, S&P down 50. NASDAQ 136. All around a per full percentage. And yet our our little guy is just looking looking toasty. Finger at one point was just rocking it. But, uh, you know, got attacked at the end of the day. No big deal. Bounced a little back in after hours. Finger's going to be just fine. And uh, so looking good, I'd say. Looking good. I have a feeling... That is a baby deal. What's baby deal, Mad Max? I don't know anything about it. Oh, Baba? So I have no confirmation on that whatsoever. I don't have any inside track on Finger regarding Alibaba. What I will say is that if if Dirty Mayo is saying it, it's probably true. So the, the, uh, the hunch right now is that on the 25th, which is coming up pretty quick here, on the 25th, Finger's going to be ringing the bell to open up the markets. And on that same day, we might get the announcement that they've made a deal with Alibaba, which is huge. That would be absolutely massive. So, guys, uh, finger, finger is looking finger looking good. I think it's going to only continue as well. Might have a couple down days here and there, but but this is, this is huge. Finger's just going to keep uh, killing it. This warrant's going to put a lot of pressure on them. A lot of people are going to be buying in to try to get the warrant on time. I mean, we've crossed a million today in volume. And just look at this beautiful chart since we started moving in the last five days. And if you even go back a month, I mean, we've completely broken out of this malaise we were in. Um, and just whew, the momentum's all on our side. It doesn't even matter that we had uh, bad clothes. We're, we're going to be just fine. William, could the missed profit from finger earnings last earnings be in this one coming up and be the catalyst? It's possible. Yeah, plus a deal, plus a warrant on top of that. I mean, lots of good stuff. I I think finger could be um, 
it, it looks like it everything's starting to line up for finger to just go because we that the warrant announcement we've been waiting on and i have a feeling they announced that first before they start giving us a string of other announcements so we'll we'll be finding out but it's it's no small thing for them to be ringing the bell on the 25th if that's true which i don't know why else i'd be out there if it's not true what's up sideshow donna victor colby how we doing guys international get up from costa rica i love it eat some seaweed let's go baby let's go so i mean uh you can see down here the the high today we almost broke four and then they fought it back so they just they were pissed they didn't they do not want it to break four um Ham was saying on his call today that if it breaks four, he knows they're a hundred percent underwater at that point, which that would just be, they're already trapped. They're already deep underwater. And if they're a hundred percent underwater at four, watch out. Things can get very, uh, very interesting, very fast. So obviously keeping an eye on finger. I don't have anything else really to say on it today, except for just, uh, let's hope we get news on that Alibaba thing in the next couple of weeks. And as far as that, the warrants are, I think, an amazing deal. They are going to trade as well with their own ticker, which is kind of cool. And uh, so you'll be able to buy up more warrants if you want, probably at cheaper prices. And um, and from there, I mean, who knows? It's I, it's a it's as good a time to buy finger as ever. Honestly, this dip might have been a godsend for some people who don't want to buy at three seventy five four. Uh, might be a godsend for you to get in at, at these prices because I everybody including all the chart guys like Arca and Avid everybody's seeing incredible strength in finger right now so you know if that's your thing if you got if you've been waiting for a time to jump in I personally if if I had cash right now I'd be jumping in finger um, trying to scoop up at these prices because GTI is still at an amazing price and I don't think GTI is going to jump for a little bit longer still I don't know by a little bit longer it might be a couple weeks but finger definitely took over the momentum the last uh since last week um and after today it looks like it's ready to move fast and furious so anyways all right let me uh start moving on through the stuff because there's a lot to go over today i'd swear if the, if every day <laughs> if every day was like this i don't think i could ever take a day off doing lives there's just so much going on uh, what's a good amount of finger shares? Mike, the, I mean, there is no set number, man. Uh, the best amount of shares to have is what you can afford to have um, without it killing you, you know? Um, I, I've i bought in on finger and GTI as much as I can stand without, you know, having to worry month to month of how I'm going to feed my family and or pay my rent. So I never go into that level, which is also why I don't have a bunch more shares. But, you know, you have to do what you can do and just trust that, uh, trust for it to, you know, the thing is, if you get one big win, say finger doesn't go as high as we've, we believe it could go. Say it, say it tops out a hundred and you have a thousand shares. You just made a hundred grand. So with that hundred grand, you know, or is that right? A thousand times a hundred. Yeah. hundred grand. Yeah. So if you got a hundred grand and you didn't have the hundred grand before, well then you can roll over and do one of these other stocks, GTII, ZJYL, try to catch another one. But all of a sudden you have money to play with and you scoop off some profits and it, it's still life-changing. It just, it, you're going to still have to work a little more to make it long-term life-changing, but you know what I mean? I did see the O'Keefe video, pretty fascinating stuff. McLovin's in the house. What's up dips? How you doing? 1 million shares. So now what? <laughs> Good luck. The fingers float is not that big. It's hard to get a million shares. Jack, absolutely on finger overall for a buy. Picked up more at 315. Wow, well done. Thomas Dubois. Mike, you have about 2,500 finger, but don't feel like that's enough. Well, you got more than me. I'm trying to get to 1,000. I don't even have 1,000, okay? I'm I'm kind of close, but, um, you know, so you you got more than me, buddy. And I'm, you know, I'm making my plans with what I got, so selling plasma wise option it's a painful one have you ever heard about how painful it is to get plasma taken out oh i can't do it can't do it all right let me go through so after today's uh cpi came out hot hotter than expected which uh you know if you watch this channel you probably were expecting that uh the market tanked which was fun 
but check it out now the uh the price cuts are our rate cuts are being pushed down and now the market thinks the fed will start cutting rates in september and will only do two rate cuts this year I, all right there it is i win i win i'm the winner not yet I, you got to see it happen to be the winner but i'm doing a pal right now i'm declaring victory in december but no i'm just <laughs> But I've been saying September this whole time, haven't I? Um, that's what the market's finally starting to see. Uh, and listen, if things keep going bad and getting worse on inflation, they won't even cut in September. They won't. Um, but as of right now, it looks like September is what everybody's on. And so that's where we're, that's what we'll see how it goes. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty crazy, pretty wild. So listen. All I do is follow the data, and I I think it's one of those areas where um, it actually helps me that I, I'm coming into this new the last few years and learning because it gives me a fresh eyes because it's a lot of the people who have been through these things before and old Fed chairs and they see what the Fed used to do. They're the ones that all disagree with me, but I'm telling you that this is, uh, this is different this time, um, at least on how the Fed's acting, and just yeah it's gonna get wild it's gonna get wild this market can't handle this anymore um it, it really can't it's it's showing major cracks and it's only a matter of time till it breaks when that is i don't know but i do still believe it's going to be before the election you know joking you're not selling plasma well, that's good <laughs> how high do i think finger can squeeze you well it can Ken and probably well are two different things, but uh, mathematically speaking, finger could hit 2,000 to 2,500, somewhere in that range. Probably speaking, I think it does break 1,000. I, I think it's somewhere in the 1,200 to 1,500 range it spikes to. No, Keith did, uh, got a got a Fed guy today and was talking to him about some PAL stuff. So it was interesting. Uh, DB wondering if the deal between finger and Baba is real. Uh, listen, I don't know, but it could be. And, uh, I find no reason to think that it's not at least, uh, a very possible, uh, definite possibility. So yeah. Winner, winner, chicken dinner, Jack. <laughs> Thank you, Linda. <laughs> Eric, you started the official A's in the whole telegram group. <laughs> Bad words and racial slurs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> huh. Oh, man. You'll just have to pull that clip from me last night and just run it over and over again. So, uh, Dips, I don't know anything about this possible deal, but the the rumor is is that uh, Finger has, is making some sort of deal with Alibaba, and it's upwards of $150 million. That's all I know. That's all I've heard. So pretty, pretty exciting stuff. All right, let's continue. All right, so here's a story. Mark Gaia, Mark, brace yourself for the Fed to raise interest rates in 2024. <laughs> I don't think we're there yet. But the fact that so many people are starting to talk about it um, is showing you that the data has been so bad uh, with inflation that uh, it, they're, they're, it's, starting to, it's starting to get passed around. It's starting to be whispered that there might be rate hikes. And uh, if that happens, watch out. It'll they'll crash the market. They will. If and it's coming to the point where I think personally, um, they're looking at it and they're thinking, uh, we might. The only way to beat inflation might be to crash the market. They might be at that point. And the idea of a soft landing is quickly going bye bye, because if inflation keeps raising, then the only way to beat it is to keep raising rates. And to basically cause disinflation, which means breaking something, <laughs> breaking our market. So that uh, they might take that route. And if they raise rates, I, I think it'll happen immediately. You need Dirty Mayo as a special guest. He's awesome. He uh, he cusses more than Pedro, but <laughs> he is awesome. <laughs> the one fingers telling us what they're doing are actually doing it. Buy as much as you can. You're going to love yourself even more later. I, listen to one. I, I, I definitely agree with that. Not financial advice, but I definitely agree with it. Um, finance a lot. Now that CPI is passed, the only thing left is PPI tomorrow. And PPI is going to come in too. It might come in just at expectations, but if it's higher again, then expectations, watch out. 
Once that's out of the way, the perceived risk drops until the end of the month. Why I believe we should see a rally begin soon. So his idea is that we're um, we're going to see a mini rally after the next couple days until the end of the month. And, you know, we'll see. He's basing this completely off the uh, the way the market acted in 2020 leading up to the market crash in March. Um, and you know what? Maybe he's right. Uh, he gives great, great data, great analysis. So I, I always pay attention to him. Um, but tomorrow, tomorrow should be another a red day. Um, in fact, based on futures, it's looking red already. So, yeah, we're already red in futures. So interesting stuff. If 2020 is repeating, the party isn't quite over yet. So here's what it did in 2020. We see the dip right here, then back up and then crash. So that's what he's thinking. We're at right here before we go up and then down and right here it's see this little dip that's us right now so it could be a little mini rally and then boom we'll see what happens we'll see what happens gary ball is in the house what's up buddy i think i already said that <laughs> sometimes i forget who i said hi to thomas you talked about way before turkey day pal's gonna raise it again he might he really might um i think they need if they're going to raise, I think they need one more big uh, CPI report probably next month to uh, to really start talking about raising. But right now, we're so this is where we've been, okay? We went from the dot plot showing six rate cuts and the market pricing in seven. That was December. Two, down to four, down to three. down. Now we're down to two and September. So it's continually gone down and the Fed is basically at the point where it's saying like we might not cut at all. So we're, we're slowly going down. We're, we're about to hit the point where they're going to say we probably aren't going to cut rates this year. That's probably coming soon. And then we get to the now we need to hike. And I think one more big inflation month could get us there. Uh, Bob, I haven't heard anything new on ZJYL. I just know some people who are in the know and they say they are not going anywhere. They're very excited about it. I haven't talked to Pedro. I miss that guy. Sideshow, all I know is Ace and Kramer are on the same page about the economy. <laughs> Shut up, Sideshow. No, we're not on the same page about the economy. We're on the same page about rate cuts, okay? Be, be fair. Uh, Gary had your C4, C5 fusion today. Could use a nice squeeze of pellet pet about man, Gary. That's rough. Uh, God bless you on that, and I pray for healing and that pain goes away fast. That's crazy. COVID did not cause that crash, Deef. Uh, the crash started before the COVID lockdowns. Just so you know. Just so you know that, uh, and I've researched this. It's it's true. I was surprised the first time I heard it too. But when you look at it, when you actually research it, the market crash, uh, COVID was a cover. It wasn't why it crashed. Alan, you're still about figuring it out. Tomorrow you predict th predict 13% green. You think it'll go up 13%? That would be sick. We can hope. That would be awesome. All right. Core services, less shelter inflation is a key metric Fed follows, known as super core. Metric jump 0.7% month over month. Biggest jump since September 22. Super core inflation is now up 5% year over year, highest since April 2023. This comes after multiple monthly increases since 23 low. Meanwhile, headline CPI inflation is up for two months straight for the first time since September 23. Real wage growth is turning negative again. Fight against inflation far from over. And you can just see it on here. I mean, my God. That's that's pretty scary, honestly, if you're if you're looking at this inflation run, because this is where, you know, they really thought we were in that downturn. We beat it. It's gonna be smooth sailing from here, but it's just up, up, up and climbing and not a spike which can easily go back down but this is this is more slow and steady this uh this really could be concerning in the fight against inflation which is going to suck for all of our pocketbooks but could be the thing we need to uh to break everything that needs to be broken what's up dave smith immortal yeah buddy esk no cuts till after the election i think you might be right esk i i really do um I definitely think there's still a possibility of September possibility, but that possibility is dwindling more by the day. So I nailed it. Thanks, Katie. <laughs> Thank you. You're big green, both your finger counts. That's awesome. The one. Yeah. Yeah. Finger has been very good to me. My, um, 
my cost basis average is 220 in finger so i'm i'm feeling really good right now okay let's keep moving uh no great post from northwest here on finger algorithmic runner see a pattern same old tired run up then down to scare out paper hands in sync until 205 then the split and uh anyway it's just a great you can see it right here 205 comes and then just the split right here and finger starts going down and he calls it man he's got he's got the algorithm time now so we're going to keep watching that see what happens around 205 again tomorrow but very interesting and great post northwest good good work if you're here Shocking stat of the day. Now, this is pretty mind-blowing. Inflation hasn't fallen in a single month since January 2021. That is, uh, that is the entire Biden presidency. How wild is that? So the man who came in says, Inflation, Bidenomics, is, ice cream is good. He uh, is very excited about fighting inflation for us and has instead, uh, in his entire time in office, which is now three and a half years almost, uh, not had one month where inflation went down. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable. So it means overall prices are up a whopping 19% in less than four years. Haven't had year over year inflation print below 3% in three years. Furthermore, three consecutive years, by the way, 36 consecutive months. Furthermore, inflation has been above its target for 37 straight months. Building on years of inflation, we effectively have compounding inflation. But don't worry, the labor market's strong. <laughs> this is just, it's unbelievable. It is, it's unbelievable. Yeah, thanks, Thomas. Yeah, I, I was able to average down with that downturn. But um, listen, you, my finger by, uh, cost basis might be exciting, but my GTI is not. So <laughs> sorry, I can't brag about anything. Uh, WV, you don't think we see anything substantial GTI until next year? Oh, I couldn't disagree more, WV. There is so much going on behind the scenes with GTI. They are fighting hard. Not uh, Listen, we know management were kicking in the butt, but there are a lot of important people doing big things working uh trying to get gti going and i think something's gonna happen soon you think trump will pick me for vp <laughs> I, oh my god that's so funny if he even knew i existed yeah finger floats only 37 million shares it's really small it's trump's fault biden always don't work i know i know apparently that's what they keep telling me anyways Today, uh, here's yields and treasury yields. Today was the largest one-day jump in the two-year yield since COVID pandemic. Federal Reserve's interest rates follow the two-year and three-month yield. You can see right here, here's the jump. Now, this is um, terrible for... Uh, uh, whenever this happens with the yields going up, this um, the market does not like it. Okay, so bonds are down point, well, almost three, three cents, but this is... This is uh, this is more lately. During the day, it was up quite a bit. And um, anyways, the the yields are that's that's everybody jumping into because they're not buying them at the lower prices. They're buying they're pushing it up. Okay, so the the treasury auctions have not been going well. So um, yeah, anyways, <laughs> it's a sign of a declining economy and a declining market. So usually when these go up, the market goes down. Just so you know. And today we had the biggest jump in two uh, since the pandemic, so four years. Today, CPI said the 10-year yield spiking along with the dollar. Powell will have to start hiking rates again soon. And here again, just all this happened today, by the way, guys. All this happened today. Yeah, I hope I'm right too, WV. I really do. Key, what's up? You got your GTI average to 73 cents, Husker? That's pretty impressive, honestly. You got May options, Bo? Nice. Finger average four, GTI 20. You're 23 cents of GTI, Donna? Wow. Congrats. Toss, not legal is giving GTI high ups for warning. He is, yeah. Yeah. Um, It would be uh, amazing to see GTI over one again. I don't think we're, we're that far off, honestly. I think Finger's starting to have its day now. It's turned around, and I think GTI will eventually um, start doing that soon too. But 
All right, guys, you have got to watch this. I don't, this is, um, speaking of Bidenomics, I, I don't know how many of you guys watched this when I posted earlier, but this is MSNBC, so you know, you know they set this up to get, like, the answers they wanted. And this is people being asked about the current economy. And uh, <laughs> watch this. Trump's policies on the economy would be better for your family personally. Raise your hand. All right. So that is everybody. <laughs> and this is MSNBC. This isn't Fox News. This, is, <laughs> this isn't um, right wing media, you know, or uh, Newsday or, you know, nor Newsmax. This is sticking like the leftist <laughs> and they bought a bunch of people. They thought for sure they were going to get like this great, uh, at least a mix. And they ask them, hey, who, who's going to be better off your family with Trump's Trump instead of Biden? And they all <laughs> raise their hand. <laughs> the rest of it is unbelievable, too. You guys got to watch it. It's hilarious. They all just uh, talk about how like horrible the economy is because of Biden, how all he cares about is a stock market and uh, and that's not the real economy. And these people are in swing states. They're supposed to be the undecideds and they are all Trump, all of them. It's it's amazing to watch. And then we get Mika's sad face at the end because she just she cannot believe what she just saw. In fact, we'll just laugh at her for a second. Really important and hard insights for the Biden campaign to hear there and hearing all that. You might think things are pretty bad for President Biden. That was not good. <laughs> I'm telling you, on the on election night, I'm having I, I think I'm just going to be live all night. And uh, and we're just going to laugh, watch all this stuff. We'll, we'll have guests. We'll make a big party out of it because uh, I think it's going to be. Uh, an unbelievable landslide, even with all the fighting and everything, or the cheating they're going to try and everything. It's going to be, it's going to be unreal. But man, that made me, that made me laugh. That was just too funny. By the way, President Biden now is in charge of rate cuts, uh, in his head, because he he came out today with a statement that first news may delay rate cut for homes, homes. I don't know what the Fed will do, but there will be a rate cut before the end of the year. <laughs> Who are these? People? Oh my God, we have just entered into the stupid is just coming out even more. It's so, so, uh, so amazing. Um, yeah, <laughs> right, Jack, all hands raised. <laughs> Key, your average is 64 cents with 80,000 shares. Holy smokes, man. Wow. They find Hunter's glass pipe. Aaron, when did we have to have finger shares by to receive the warrants? I don't know. They didn't list a, uh, um, a record date. It wasn't listed in there, so that hasn't been announced yet. But um, I would, I would think based on, I would think it's probably by May first. But uh, yeah, just we have to stay on top of that. You mean election week? I don't think it's going to take a week this time. I think they'll declare a winner that night if we have an election. Now that's that's the question. But if there is an election, I'm telling you guys, there's no way Trump doesn't win. Um, so that'll be a fun live. I'll do. Uh, regional banks starting to realize help isn't coming. You can see the the regional bank ETF. That's a terrible view of it, but I'll go down here. But it's just cratering. <laughs> they know help's not coming. Uh, bank collapse is probably coming before too long. Uh, when you're looking at the inflation report, remember it's worse given wages were flat for March. So in other words, inflation's going up, but the wages aren't keeping up. Uh, and uh, so people, it's getting further spread between what they can afford. Uh, big data poll registered voter economic confidence in index doing its job well. Mains ahead of lagging economic government data. By the way, if you guys don't follow Rich Barris, you need to. He is the best pollster on the planet. Uh, unbelievable stuff. His analysis is so good. And he does a rumble show. Um, every few days where he goes over the polls and he goes over uh, the trends and uh, data stuff. It is phenomenal. He is so good. So uh, I just want to sing his praises right now because 
Uh, you guys, like, you know, some of the stuff I, I guess, right. I guess, right. It's because I'm following, I found the smartest people. I'm not, you know, I find the data and I make determinations and I, 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 but I also find people who, who see stuff and I'm like, that sounds right. And then I, so I research more, like they steer me in the right direction. Um, so we all help each other, you know, uh, it's not like I'm just sitting here looking at charts all day. <laughs> I, I find people to trust and, and, um, and based on their record, uh, and that, that serves me well. So I really trust him. I think his election coverage is the best there is. So I highly recommend checking it out. Um, I just wanted to share this cause it's crazy. USDA to remove Lunchables. There's lead and sodium. I mean the sodium, whatever, but the high levels of lead in Lunchables, that's disgusting. Like they're feeding our kids lead. I, I'm sorry. I just had to share that because that's Lunchables, man. If you got kids, stay away from them. All right. The 30 year fixed mortgage rate jumped to 7.29% today. Uh, that's, that's getting pretty, pretty crazy especially if you want to buy a house. I feel bad for anybody in the market right now to buy a house because uh, I think it's – without rate cuts, this is only going to go up more the rest of the year. And if we see another rate, uh, rate hike, watch out. It's going to be real real rough. Not nah, what's up, buddy? You got any good jokes for me tonight, man? <laughs> um, great video the other day, by the way, Not. Your GTI stuff was so good, and I loved how you turned it positive at the end, and uh, and went to to why all the stuff going on, but also why you're excited about what's coming. So, anyways, just great stuff. And guys, if you're not following Not Legal, go follow him. I think not. I think you're about to pass me in followers, man. I'm jealous of you. You uh, you're you're the you're the popular guy now. So, good job. Greg Menard, May Day is the first of May, isn't that when Powell decides on rates? Um, I don't think they have FOMC on on May first. Usually they have it in the middle of the month. I'd be surprised if it's on the first. You love that lead as a kid, <laughs> Susan. What's going on? All right, let me keep it moving here. Um, okay, so. Atlanta Fed also revised down the GDP nowcast. Okay, so uh, inflation way up today, and now they're revising down GDP. I mean, tell me we're not in a recession, right, guys? This is again. I I think I sh scared off the people who don't agree with me on stuff last night. But when I had my freak out, <laughs> by the way, if you missed it. Uh, you, I lost my cool last night for the first time, I think ever on a live. So, um, and people actually liked it. So there you, there you go. That's fun. Um, but anyways, they, uh, this is, we're, we're basically in a recession. They're just not calling it that. And the, if, if this doesn't stop, I mean, tell, I, I still don't see one good indicator in the economy anywhere. So until I start seeing that, I'm going to continue calling for a crash and, and some kind of economic downturn. It's just that's how it's got to be, which, you know, at least for our stocks, we're, we're going to be good. How the heck do you accidentally put lead into lunch bowls? Right? <laughs> nice call reinflation. Thanks not. Thank you. Heidi, what's up? Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, Knott's got good videos, man. See, Knott, you've got lots of fans, buddy. Cindy Lou talking to lead space paint. Oh, God. That's why we're all crazy. 10-year uh, yield officially back about 4.5%. I just showed you guys that. But um, this is also the market's pricing in. Just two cuts now. Base case removed. Base case removed all rate cuts through Q2. All right, so... That means uh, July would be the earliest, but as we just saw, they're also calling for um, September. Higher for longer is back. So I already went through that. All right, so here the FDIC chief came out today and said, U.S. is ready if big Wall Street bank ever failed. Why say that today? You're just randomly saying that? Oh, hey, we're ready in case a big major Wall Street bank fails. I mean, to me, that's that's pretty much... We're uh, we're at the verge, guys. So let's let's get ready for that. 
the banks are screaming for rate cuts. They need them to survive right now because the interest rates are killing them. Uh, especially, if, I saw today that New York Community Bank, which is the one that almost failed in March before they got uh, that billion dollar buy-in, um, they have the highest interest rates on their savings accounts, which showed me that uh, the person was making the point that if a bank has high, super high interest rates on their accounts, it's usually a sign of uh, failure that um, they're not doing well. So these banks are getting killed by these interest rates. They, they're getting killed, especially the ones with uh, high leverage in commercial real estate. So just that CPI report coming in hot today, pushing off rate cuts, means banks that are shaky are, are just got shakier today. And I think this is about to happen uh, real soon here. Um, this is the first time markets are pricing and less rate cuts than the Fed guidance. So the dot plot still shows three. All right. That's why it's saying that. But just four months ago, markets saw six to eight rate cuts, cuts beginning in March. Odds of a rate cut in June are down from 60% to 22%. Dropped 40% one day. And inflation is transitory. Fair ch Powell's victory speech in December. So everybody's hating on Powell today. Which, you know, there's good reason for that. He's been throwing uh, throwing everybody off with, with what he's saying when the data keeps uh, calling him out. Fingers should easily get back to seven. I think it will, too. Uh, I think by the end of the month we could see seven, yeah. Key, another man-made rain coming to SoCal this Saturday. They're seeding clouds. Uh, I heard San Francisco's doing that. <laughs> Thanks, so now what? <laughs> I didn't lose my call. I had to set some straight. Well, that's what it felt like in the moment. But anyways, you guys responded pretty well. Although my viewership's down tonight, but that could just be because I'm late. We'll see. We'll see if it impacts me. But I think a couple people definitely won't be back. But that's all right. You only watch Knott's videos for the jokes. Well, Knott's, Knott's really nice if you go for the jokes because he always does his jokes in the first, like, three to five minutes. And uh, Knott, I like when you do your three jokes in a row. And uh, usually they build a little bit, <laughs> but it's good stuff. Um, you were hungry as a kid, but you never nod on the woodwork or walls. I guess I had to figure out how to get lead into kids more effective Lunchables. It's sick. I mean, I thought we were done with lead everywhere, but, you know, our, so much of our food is poison now. It's it's really, really sad. You aced your IQ test, got 90 out of 100. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that means you're like three points uh, above Forrest Gump. That's pretty good, man. That's pretty good. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, if you guys are interested tomorrow, there's going to be a space call led by Jamers here. Uh, he's awesome, by the way. And he wants to keep doing space calls to start getting out. Uh, kind of like what was going on last summer with MMTLP. But for all these stocks right here, all these short squeeze stocks and everything, um, I'm going to be on it tomorrow around uh, 645. And so uh, it's worth a follow. And I think he's going to have great stuff going on. But we're trying to, um, and I, I fully support him in this, get people conversating again on Twitter uh, and build up this momentum again. Uh, not that we have lost that much, but I think it's time to really push the gas because I think we're, we're starting to step on necks of shorts if this keeps going on. So it could be really good. Husker, with all the bank troubles, wondering how much lower their breaking point is. It's hard to know. It really is. Liquidity is drying up. I showed a lot of that last night of how liquidity is drying up. And with liquidity drying up, the banks, they start getting desperate. Uh, if PPI comes in tomorrow, the um, if it comes in hot, it's it's just going to be even scarier for them, honestly. Um, and I think it will. The, the question is whether or not it'll come in as expected or higher. CPI has been the one that's been running a little hotter lately. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. Um, if it's at expectations or maybe like 0.1% lower, you know, the market's going to throw a party. So we'll, we'll just see what happens. But the point is, is that inflation's obviously not going away. And it's it's climbing again which is exactly what they didn't want to see the market didn't want to see and being as inflated as the market is right now it means it's only got further to fall if they realize that everything they based all that investing on all that 
buying of stocks on was uh, market pumping on was all fake. Once they realize that and once they start running to cover, um, it's going to get ugly real fast. And so we'll, we're watching carefully. As far as the banks go, they're already losing a crap ton of money from commercial real estate. That could be just a more slow, painful death where we start getting maybe a couple weeks, maybe in May, maybe mid-May, we start seeing a couple failures. And then once one or two happen, it, it starts uh, spiraling. Uh, we did have five banks go bankrupt last week. That was not very big news, but five banks went bankrupt last week. Um, they didn't call them failures. I don't I quite understand the difference. I, I guess they could keep going. I don't understand how a bank can go keep going with bankruptcy. But anyways, um, it obviously is, uh, there's obviously made major issues. Wicked. I don't know what it is. Arca is way too excited on finger and GTI on his live stream breaking out here real soon. So, so now he's really excited on finger and, G and GTII. Interesting. Mad Max, you're sticking with finger motion ZJYL after that ticker sound for long. I don't like GTI current situation. Well, you don't have to like their current situation. Just the, to me, the, the setup as a squeeze hasn't changed and I've never been here for fundamentals, but the fundamentals will help for sure. But midnight. Oh, please like hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you. I appreciate that. Watch the ads as a way to say thank you. Yeah, that'd be awesome. But you don't have to watch them if it's a Biden ad. <laughs> Gas is outrageous. Yeah. Avid's back on GTI too. Avid and Arco are back on GTI. What? That's wild. Right after last week. Well, I never went anywhere. <laughs> or not. You aced your drug test at work today. No one got higher than me. <laughs> That's how it goes. Quietly banks are failing. Yeah, let me see if I can find that. Um, the banks that went bankrupt last week because I want to uh, here we go I saw it on a, a YouTube video with Daniel Dermartino Booth and that, that woman does not mess around so I know she's uh, telling the truth I just gotta see if I can find the actual um, info on it. Let's see here. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it without taking too long. And I don't want to do that to you guys. But she's got she's got great stuff too. You guys should definitely check it out. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I'm having trouble finding it. Oh well. Um, I have one more thing I can try. Yeah, nothing's coming up right now. So I'll have to look for it another uh, when I have more time. I don't want to do that to you guys right now. Not very exciting. Question is Univest acting as a broker why the three hundred million in the filing your thoughts? Um I really don't know how that's all supposed to work, Mad Max. It's a great question. What I do know is that the the talk by Martin Shen, the CEO of Finger, has been that Univest is acting more as a partner than just a investor just flooding money in. So to me, the idea is that Univest got in. And they're like, we're going to put up all this money, but before we do that, we're going to get you guys in a better situation so we also make more money in the long term when we buy in. So I think what's happening right now is Univest is helping broker deals for Finger. And Martin Shen said himself, he said, Univest has been a great partner, better than expected. 
um, in the in the video with William. So Univis is acting as a partner, helping get deals done, and then once these deals are done, announced, stocks moving up, that looks like that will be when Univis buys in with the money they've uh, committed to, and Univis has. A history of doing this when they've worked with other companies, sometimes they'll take six months to a year before they actually run them up. So this isn't outside of what Univest usually does. But uh, every indication, including the CEO of Finger, says that Univest is still working closely with Finger. Thoughts on GDC? I have no thoughts on GDC. I only am in it because uh, Ham and his friends, and I know his friends are, and they're people I trust too. So that's, uh, you know... Um, but who knows? The question is, when could it go? And it's definitely taken much longer than anybody thought. So you got banks to your broker watch list just to see the flux getting spicy, is it, Thomas? I haven't been watching bank stocks lately. Husker finger runs first. GTI's lack of fundamentals currently doesn't matter. If, if yeah, I agree, Husker. If finger runs and a crap ton of people then go buy into GTI, which I believe will happen, that could spring it. So. You know, GTI has always been based on the, the squeeze potential, and that's still there. Calvin, 60% of these shorts aren't going to be able to tap dance through these next 60 days like the last two years. I love it, Calvin. I mean, I completely agree with you that it's tightening. The noose is getting tighter on them. 100% agree with you. Um, the, the reason I stay away from timelines is because well, first of all, I've gotten them wrong plenty of times, but also um, the shorts always seem they're you know they're like cockroaches; they're always harder to get rid of than you think. And it, it, at some point, it's going to happen for sure, and it could very well be the next sixty days, especially with what's happening with liquidity, with the banks, with inflation, with no rate cuts. That's crushing everybody. So yeah, I mean, you could absolutely be right, and I wouldn't be surprised if it did happen. But I, I can't personally say, I, I you know, next 60 days. But it is getting very tight out there. It is getting very tight out there. Things are so messed up. Caitlyn Jenner is now saying Bruce Jenner touched her 30 years ago. <laughs> when she listened to that old song, it's like, when I think about you, I touch myself. But since she was Bruce back then and now, you know, you know how it goes. <laughs> Uh, Max, you think an 80% chance finger hits five before dividend warrant? Oh, I think, yeah, I would agree with that, Max. I think finger could hit six or seven by the end of the month, uh, the rate it's going. I really do. Especially if, if they ring the bell on the 25th and it's an Alibaba deal gets announced, watch out already with what's going on. Robert, he says he's met with Univest before. Really likes them. Met them in New York. Then they met you in Phoenix. Great people. That's awesome, Robert. Thanks for sharing that. Um, everything I've heard about Univest is good. Not legal. All right, here's some breaking news. Some birdies told him that Univest was presented an opportunity with GTI and would have interest. Mm, interesting. Well, not since you let the cat out of the bag. I can say I've heard the same thing. So I just wasn't sure I could say anything about it. But yeah, I've heard that too. So uh, yeah, both Not and I have heard that Univest um, is looking into something with GTII, just so you guys know. There you are. There's a lot of interesting things going on with GTI. I'm telling you guys behind the scenes. It's just a matter as if can they get it going. Once it gets going, the momentum should be unreal. Mad Max, you're thinking millions could get dropped on finger very soon before one hundred percent, yeah. I agree. Wicked supposedly buying doesn't happen for the higher hands till five. So finger rings the bell has to catapult past five. Uh, I don't know about if it has to, but Matt Max, it rings the bell. It's ceremony. It's a ceremony. It's like when the, you know, and on the stock market on wall street, the bell rings, it, the bell rings to start the day. The bell rings to end the day. So it's, you know, starts at nine Eastern ends at four. Um, and the bell rings to, to open and close it and it's ceremonial. It just means they're going to be there and they're going to say fingers ringing the bell, you know, and it's, it gives them attention and everything. So Alibaba is not for sure. It's not, nothing's for sure until we get an announcement from the company or Alibaba, I guess. <laughs> 
so know it. Jeremy just hopped on die already talking about finger warning. Oh yeah, I talked a lot about that last night, Jeremy. But um, if you guys have questions, listen, the warrant is, it's, um, it's a great deal. It is. It's the last time I, we were in a stock with a warrant, which is before most of you guys were here, but was when GTI issued a warrant at 275 and the stock ran to nine. A major reason it ran to nine was because of the warrant. Um, the warrant this time with finger is one per share. You get a warrant for every share you have. You can trade that warrant. It might be worth 30 cents, 50 cents on the open market. We don't know. It's going to be under the ticker FNGRW. But I personally think it's more valuable to hold on to them because those warrants will be able to be turned in. Every 10 warrants will can be turned in for one common share. Those shares will be bought at $7 when you turn it in. So if you turn in 10 warrants, you buy a share at 7 bucks. But the best part is, is that that $7 never changes until 2026. So you have two years to buy to exchange your warrants for shares. That means the stock could be at $1,000 and you are like, I'm ready to trade in my warrants and buy at 7 You buy them at 7 and you trade them at seven or 1000 the next day. They're not unrestricted as far as I know. So it's it's a crazy good deal. It's it's and the fact is you can trade them on the side too. So it's a great little dividend. It really is, and it has sent stocks before. There you go. We get a top squeeze with Universe pumping finger. <laughs> Another top squeeze. That'd be crazy. Bob is looking bullish. Two hundred, three hundred incoming for finger. Uh, listen, I'm telling you guys, I think finger is going to be a bigger monster than that. I really do with the short interest against it. And the, I think 200, 300 for finger is where finger will end up in two, three, four years with all that's going on without the squeeze with the squeeze over or something, you know, I think it's going to be there. That's the kind of company we're in. <laughs> you guys. So now are you sure it won't be one warrant for one share? No, you get a warrant per share. Yeah. But it takes 10 warrants to buy a new share. Yeah. Univest going to make counterfeit shorts or a hundred percent. You're welcome, Jeremy. Yeah. It's a great deal. I mean, and let me see if I can find the, um, the S three. It was shared the other day, but I haven't, uh, let me see here. We can pull it up and look at it here. It's funny, I look up a Finger S3 and all the old ones come out from Univest. Ah, here it is. Thank you, Dwayne Dotson. Is this the latest one? Yeah, all right, here we go. Okay, so. Uh, that's not the part I want right here. Okay. We are distributing at no cost to you as a holder of shares of our common stock par value 0 0.0001 per share transferable warrants. Um, when exercisable 10 warrants will entitle the holder to purchase one common share at a price of $7 per share. Warrants will be exercisable with the warrant agreement until 5 p.m. Eastern time and the expiration date, 2026. So you see they haven't filled all these dates in yet. Um, and I imagine that's going to be announced in a PR. So this is the S3. This is just clearing it with the SEC, making it official. And then they'll put these dates in probably when they give us a PR, which should be very soon. Um, but so you see it says, if you own common shares on blank. In other words, they haven't set the record date yet. And then we don't have the expiration date yet either. We just know it's 2026. So there you go. Wigged, does it feel like GTI and Finger are going to possibly have catalyst at the same time? Uh, I would highly doubt at this point, at this point, I highly doubt they would be at the exact same time. I really, uh, you know what, if you guys want to say, of all the nonsense we've gone through, one of the good things to me is that to me, Finger and GTI are even more likely now to run one after the other than before. I think if they had run last year, they would have run in tandem. 
And uh, but now I think it's, you know, I thought maybe they'd be a couple days apart. But now I think there's going to be more time in between, maybe three, four or five days a week from one to the other. Uh, and the reason is, is just uh, finger right now is prime. GTI, I think, is a little further off. So it's going to take a little more time for the buying pressure to catapult GTI, which I still think it will. I still think there'll be enough, but, um, which is great. It gives everybody a chance to buy in more. All right. Eric Ham said we get something physical from finger. You're still holding out for your signed finger board member trading cards. <laughs> Martin Shen rookie cards. Oh my God. That's funny. Buy finger squeeze later. Come back to buy for growth. F heck. Yeah. I mean, it really could be worth it. No, that's not true, Optics. It's right here, man. You get one warrant for each share. It's a one-to-one, -one, okay? It's right here in the S3, all right? One-to-one. -one. When exercisable, 10 warrants get you one common share at seven. So every share, you get a warrant, but it takes 10 warrants to buy a common share, okay? You have to trade in 10 warrants to get one share afterwards. So if you own 1,000 shares, you get 1,000 warrants. You can use them to get a 100 finger if you want to. It's right here, Optics. It's right here. And they're also going to trade at... Uh, where's the... Yeah, they're going to tr be tradable under the symbol FNGRW. I'm staring at it right here, Optics. <laughs> I mean, I'm showing you guys the actual S3. Um, Mad Max, all I know is I see once a lifetime opportunity to be a multimillionaire of fingers, EJ. Well, I understand GTI, but feeling that's fine. You won't feel uncomfortable, Max, when uh, when finger runs and everybody's bombing into GTI and it's springing up. Trust me, you'll feel great about it then. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, Max, um, I've had the privilege of being able to hear a lot of the stuff and talk to a lot of the people working behind the scenes on GTI. And I'm telling you right now that it is uh, I I'm as excited about the future of GTI, the the near future. I'm talking in the next few weeks, few months uh, that I've ever been because uh, all I'm waiting for on GTI is one thing. And if if one thing with momentum starts on GTII, whether it's a deal, whether it's new CEO, uh, once that hits, it is going to be off to the races. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. That's all right, Optics. It, it is kind of confusing. I had to read it a couple times, so... Thomas, you totally agree on my prediction of finger going first and mass upward interest in GTI. I mean, absolutely. I totally see that. Yeah. It does end up the same optics. You're right about that, but you're not automatically given shares. You get uh, warrants that can be converted to shares or you can trade them. That's the difference. So yeah, I'm still comfortable with ZJYL. Why? Because I know the people in it. I know the people who hold more than the float and those people are, <laughs> they're not going anywhere. And everybody I know that is behind the scenes of ZJYL is very bullish on it. And so sometimes you just got to trust the people you trust. And that's what I am on this. And that, you know what? Maybe they're wrong. But they've been writing about enough other stuff that it, even if they're wrong on one, I want to break my trust. It's not like I put it so much in ZJYL that it'll crush me. I just put it sprinkled a little bit that I could afford in it. Like I told you guys the other night that... Um, I, you know, I don't have a lot to put in these plays and I, sometimes I move my money around and that's how I buy stuff. Um, it's not that I like, I, I actually, the other day when I bought DJT, I sold some finger to buy DJT. I sold some finger. I bought DJT, uh, DJT ran. I sold it. I made some money. I went back and bought more finger. <laughs> so I got hit with a wash trade too. So that was fun. But it, anyways, it is what it is. But that's like, uh, you know, so with ZJYL, I just just put a little bit of money in that I could afford. Um, and that's that's how I do it. But, yeah, I don't – I'm not going. I'm just going to see what happens with it. And I tell you what, with ZJYL, if we get Finger and then GTII back-to-back, 
Uh, Z Joel would be the next one I go into. I think it's that close. GTI is still number one as far as squeezes go. I agree with you as far as like percentage run. I do still think it'll have the highest percentage run. Husker, it's weird how Schwab won't let you set a $50, $50 GTC limit on finger, but it will on G What? That's pretty crazy. That must mean they know something. It's a strange setup having to buy 10 warrants for one share. Well, you're not buying 10 warrants. You'll, you'll have 10 warrants and you can trade them in to get a share at seven dollars when you're ready at any point so I, I don't i mean i don't know but i think that you know back when ham said they were working on something physical um i think this is what they came up with and the it's it's physical in the sense that your warrants are tradable immediately so it's like being given a dividend and somebody brought up ape the other night it's not ape because this these warrants are not taking away any value from your, uh, they're not taking away any value from your shares. Ape was a whole new security and it ripped AMC into two securities. This is not that. This is completely valuable on its own. Price prediction on finger, I, I mean, I already said it, but I think it could spike from 1200 to 1500 yeah. You're good, Zechariah. Kathy, not said you had to own Finger by April 7th to qualify. Really? Is that true? I I didn't see that, but it's not in here. That would be weird that they'd file this and go backwards. I just, I would be surprised, but I'm not saying it's impossible. Imagine if ZJ Wells a medical breakthrough. Yeah. Optics, the fact warrants are tradable is very good. Shorts are now going to be short another 10%. Like, absolutely, Optics. I think it's brilliant. I really do. I think one of the reasons it took so long to come out is they were coming up with the best idea possible to put um, to put pressure on the shorts immediately. That's what I think. They, it took so long. Mamax, it's blowing to think how these stocks short 10 times or more over the float. Trump said he has someone he will put in charge of the SEC. Yeah, he's going to put Patrick Byrne in charge of the SEC, and it's going to be awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> no, I know. This is a great warrant. It really is. Gary Ball with GTI's delayed 10K doesn't mean there's something about this one. I don't I don't know. I mean, hopefully, hopefully it does. Oh, and they offer warrant for oh I um I think I know what you're saying, so now what? We got till 2026. Yes, that's right here, Dave. It doesn't have the date yet, but it does say till 2026. So two years. I mean, two years to exercise. Um, that's a pretty good deal. I mean, with what Finger's doing right now, I mean, think about it. Finger's uh, deal with, they have the deal with China, and it hasn't really started yet. Once that starts, it's billions of dollars. Um, that's already done. We know that. And on top of that, they have all this other stuff in motion. They might, and now we found out they might have a deal coming up with Alibaba. So, I mean, your finger could be in two years, it could be worth 200 bucks even without the squeeze. And, and you could just be like, oh, hey, it's five days before the expiration date of my warrants. I'm just going to go buy a bunch of shares for seven bucks. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. It's a great deal. When do we get the GTI dividend shares? When the brokers release them, man. Hopefully the 29th of this month, yeah. A ham trading card, a silhouette saying 4Q. His <laughs> stats are questionable. <laughs> One of his stats would be like um, rate of rate of talk, and it'd be 100%. 100% rate of speaking. Uh, make sure. I thought I heard a rumble on my phone, but I guess uh, I'm not seeing anything, so. I just never know if Ham's calling me. Whoop. Yeah, GTI cracked 25 today, I know. Medical breakthrough on wheelchairs. <laughs> they got faster, okay? Heidi, can I explain how the warrants put pressure on shorts? Yeah, absolutely. So, Heidi, um, when, a, when a stock issues a dividend, in this case a warrant, which is a form of a dividend, they... Um, the, the company is responsible to deliver every bit of that to every legal um, every legal share. Okay, so in this case with Finger, 30-some million 
they they're responsible for delivering those warrants. If these shares have been over created the or the shorts are holding shares, well, they have a choice. They can either give the shares back if they borrowed them. That's real shorters. Or if they're naked, they uh, they are responsible themselves to give the value of that to the brokers. So they have to do it because every shareholder is entitled to this because of the company. So it forces shorts to cough up money or to, or to return shares. It forces them to do that. Um, and that's the rules. The rules are that the shorts are responsible for it. That's law. And so that's, that's how it puts pressure on them because they become responsible for everything they've shorted. Um, they become responsible for the dividends of the shares they've shorted. Matthew Warren, if you don't have a lot of money, where are people going to get the money from to exercise warrants? Say if you have 1,000 shares, you need 700 to exercise warrants. And that's true, Matthew. That's why you have two years to hopefully exercise them. Or you could trade them. Maybe you find a good trade for them and you just you sell your warrants uh, through a trade. I know it's – I mean, that, that part sucks. But I'm telling you, if – Fingers at a hundred bucks, and you need to conjure up seven hundred dollars to buy your hundred shares so you can sell, turn around, and sell. You're you're gonna find that money. <laughs> Trust me. You're gonna call up your uncle, your aunt, your you know your your next door neighbor. <laughs> you split that money, whatever. You'll find that money. Trust me. Mad Max, EJL insiders own the float, not selling as your bullish buy. I agree with that. Yeah. Antonio, third paragraph says April 8th. Uh, let me look. Oh, that's the last reported shares. Last reported sales price of our common shares on NASDAQ um, was 314. So that's all it's saying. And then it says. We urge you to obtain a current market price for the common shares before making any investment decision with respect to warrants. It's just some some stuff they got to put in there to to talk about stock volatility and all that. So now uh, you're good with the free warrants, but you bought warrants in the past because they're usually quite cheaper than the shares. Yeah, and that's the thing you can trade for more warrants. You guys, you understand. Like since it's going to trade on under its own call sign, um, you can you could buy more warrants. So if the warrants are thirty cents, you know, and you're like, shoot, I'll go buy ten more warrants for three bucks. You can do that. Uh, that they're going to be trading, so it's going to be pretty good. Now I I think they'll probably trade higher than that. I don't imagine a lot of people are going to sell, but who knows. I haven't seen anything that says the eighth for warrants. So, was the finger and Ali G deal about? I don't know. I don't know. I have not seen a record date for the warrants yet. Right here it says if you own. Right up here, it says if you own common shares on blank twenty twenty four, the record date, you'll be entitled to receive one. This is the only official document. Okay. So there is no date unless it's somewhere else in this document. It's big, but why would they not put it right here at the top where it's explaining it? So as far as I know, they haven't set the record date yet. Okay. Finger motion may short squeeze before dividend warrant. That would be crazy <laughs> if it short squeezes before the warrants. Yeah, that'd be kind of crappy. But you know what? Even if it did... This is an amazing opportunity to still buy in later on because my personal belief with Finger, remember when GameStop ran to 500? Well, it didn't go back down to $14. It settled at $150. It settled, you know, in 120, 150, kept bouncing up in that, in that range. That's huge. That changed the share price forever. Even now, because they did a four to one forward split. So even now, GameStop's trading what 10, 11? Even now, the share price, if you go back before the split, it, it's it's the equivalent of forty dollars. So GameStop has never gone back down to that lower level. Uh, finger motion, I think the exact same thing happens. I think it squeezes, 
maybe touches a thousand whatever and then comes back down and maybe settles at 100 150 75 and you'll still have your warrants so it's a great deal it really is you're welcome Heidi you were impressed with my blow up last night Spock <laughs> thank you <laughs> oh that Robert makes a good point uh, margin you might be able to get margin um, to front the money for them. So there you go. Yeah, there's no record date uh, officially right now. So you guys can still buy stocks to get these warrants. Robert says, let's say stocks at 16, you sell at 16, buy in at seven with warrants. Exa yeah, exactly. There's so many ways to do it. Phil, once the SEC approves this, then they can issue it dates. Yeah, there you go, Phil. Thank you. Can the warrant squeeze? Uh, I doubt it, but um, maybe. I mean, it is, they are trading. <laughs> they don't care what squeezes or something. Yeah. They can back date the record date. They can. I would be surprised if they did because the buying pressure before a record date, I would say, is bullish and exciting. So I would be surprised if they did it. Um, but for now, we know that there's not an official date. So if anybody said there is one, they either have inside info, which I doubt, or they are, uh, they were read something wrong, in my opinion. I'm not going to say they're lying, but they might have read something on here and just uh, taken see, seen one date and ex assumed it was it. So, All right. Everybody got it? We got the warrants. So hopefully the, we get those soon. We get more info soon. We get a PR. This S3 gets approved by the SEC. I imagine it'll be fast. I mean, this is a nothing for the SEC to approve. It's just a, a company in good standing, doing great, about to ring the bell uh, on the 25th. All it wants to do is issue a dividend should be should be easy. Uh, and you know what? When when uh, when GTII did it, I don't even know that GTI had to be approved. I can't remember on that. I thought they just announced it because they're in control of their stock. So I don't know. It's a question. Aaron, why did little Johnny drop the ice cream across the road? He got hit by a bus. That's terrible. That's terrible, man. I don't want to end on that dark note. <laughs> but hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up tonight, guys. It's late. I got work tomorrow. Um, tomorrow I'll be on around nine ish again. And um, listen, PPI is coming out tomorrow. We'll see if the inflation monster just keeps rearing its head and attacking the markets. Uh, pre markets all red, but barely. Um, you can see up here. We'll see what happens. Um, Finger, though, is extremely bullish right now, and I think GTI might not be far behind. Uh, we did get the new COO. I saw him tweeting today, which is interesting. He hasn't really been tweeting much before. So I don't know what that's about. If he's just trying to get more active, I don't know. But we'll see. But I think some really good things are coming uh, real fast here. The market is definitely trending in the direction that we want it to. Not because we want people to lose their 401ks, not because we want their pension to get hit. We want this to happen because this will choke out the short sellers. This is going to choke out naked short sellers who are trapped. And this is very good for us. And that's what this is all about is we win. And then on top of that, the market has to go through a correction anyways to be rebuilt. So that's why we're rooting, rooting for a crash, so to speak. Um, but just because we know long term, it'll be better for everybody. Um, but in the meantime, it will suck in a lot of ways, but we should all do very well from it. Um, you're welcome, Jeremy. Thanks, Aaron. Zechariah, you liked my rant? <laughs> I did. I ranted good yesterday. Wicked, did I get the space call today? No, I didn't. James came back with a problem with Gary G's that very little percent even know who he is. What? That's wild. Okay, interesting. You're welcome, Candace. Have a good night. A1A, good time to watch all the bank stocks for a possible put position. That's a good, good, good question or a good point. Yeah, that is. Richard and Robert talking. That's good. Those are good guys to talk. You're welcome, Heidi. Have a great night. GTI should get back to above 30 cents by Friday. That'd be awesome, Key. I hope you're right. Matthew, warrants can squeeze. The, so they can. Okay. When spades were popular during COVID, they had warrants. Our SPACs were popular in code. Warrants would run higher percentage than the stock. Those warrants were one warrant for one stock. Oh, okay. Very different, but all right. All right, well, guys, I'm going to just, I'm going to close out as I always do in a little prayer. 
And so for everybody leaving, God bless you. Have a great night. Please like, share, subscribe on the way out. I really appreciate it. Keep building the channel as always. And hey, so far, you know, I'm at least right on the inflation stuff. So I have I have my moments. <laughs> it's not total waste watching, watching this channel. Uh, you do learn some stuff, right? So anyways, guys, uh, let's pray real quick. All right, Father, th Heavenly God, thank you for so much for today. God, um, and just give us wisdom moving forward. Bless everybody here, and especially in this turbulent market. Help us all make good decisions. And bless our companies, Lord. Bless Finger and GTI especially. We've been here fighting for them for for years now. And, um, and it feels like we could be really turning a corner here. So I just pray for momentum, momentum, momentum on them, uh, favor on them, good decisions, and pressure on anybody who needs to get stuff done. And uh, I just pray that that continues. And uh, yeah, you bring the right people in to get stuff done. And so we thank you, Lord. And I pray, God, that really soon, um, God, before the end of this year, before even heading into the election or a market crash or economic downturn, you give everybody here a boost up financially, uh, hopefully through these stocks, uh, Lord, and other, other ways that they can find um, or you lead them to, but um, so that everybody can prosper. Uh, amidst a downturn. So we love you and thank you in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Bless you guys. Thank you so much as always. I appreciate you and I will see you all tomorrow.